decorated former combat veteran David Grush went public last week with claims that the U.S. has a decades-old UFO retrieval program. Grush also dropped the bombshell allegation that people have been killed by, quote, non-human intelligences. Here he is on News Nation. Let's watch. We're definitely not alone. Absolutely, the data points empirically that we're not alone, yeah. Do we have bodies? Do we have species of well, well naturally um when you recover something that's either landed or crashed um sometimes you encounter um dead pilots and uh, believe it or not as fan as fantastical as that sounds it's true hmm grush who previously worked as a representative for the national geospatial intelligence agency where his job was to help investigate ufos also said recently, quote, I think the logical fallacy there is because they're advanced, they're kind, we'll never really understand their full intent, and that's because we are not them. But I think what appears to be malevolent activity has happened. That's based on nuclear site probing activities and witness testimony. Grush went further, saying the U.S. would do anything, including killing people, in an effort to keep this secret. Mm. Yeah, so I'm fascinated by this. I don't mean to nerd out again, but this idea that we can perceive beings as malevolent because we don't understand their behavior is a core principle of Star Trek and why the prime directive is so important, the non-interference principle. An early episode with uh, this thing they call the crystalline entity. This thing was going around, destroying planets, causing chaos, this big crystal rock-like thing in space. And they realized this happens a lot in Star Trek. Oh, it's just trying to feed. Oh, it's just trying to eat. Oh, it doesn't really realize what it's doing or the impact, impact it's having on other species. And it would be interesting to, to interrogate whether or not, I mean, this is also the doomsday scenario of so many sci-fi movies. An alien comes, a human overreacts, shoots them, et cetera, and now mm -hmm. we're in an intergalactic war. So there is something, I think, kind of satisfying and interesting about someone contemplating that it would be actually difficult to judge the intent of a, 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 a UFO okay, or what are, what are the odds ET. Mm -hmm. we, we encounter or, or a, a, they come here to encounter us, an alien or extra dimensional or extraterrestrial, a, a, a non-human intelligence, but that is like within the ballpark of our intelligence level. I, what, I, what I mean is like, they're interested in our nuclear stuff. Like, mm. like, like ants don't have any relationship to human beings. Like ants don't go about their lives thinking, what do the human beings think, right? We're, we're, we're they're as, pretty interested in our picnic having behavior. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, we're not perceivable to the ants. It's, it's, it, we're so different and distinct. But isn't that and kind it, of the it point? It will be like that with aliens. I think, I think that's exactly what we're saying. That me, we, me, me and Grosh is what I we're guess. talking about, is the idea that, because ants don't perceive us, and we largely don't pay attention to ants, there are behaviors that we engage in that really have nothing to do with the ants but that are harmful to them. Let's say we build a condo and it digs up an anthill, right. and there are behaviors that they have that are at least irritating to us. If not harmful, there's fire ants and more dangerous kinds of ants. But it's not really about us. They're just protecting their territory or trying to come to their right. kitchen for snacks or, or whatever it is. So I, I think that's a really significant possibility. But this is, but no, but what is being suggested is a similar level, oh, they have crafts that are, they're right, they're recognizably non-human, but we can kind of see that they're spaceships, they're interested in our nuclear secrets. That's like, uh, that, that's like encountering like another country or something, or, or a human species, like a similar Earth-like planet with similar, do you know what I mean? That's too close to like what our intelligence and interest and in how we do things is. Like an, a genuine alien present will be like, it might not even be perceptible to the human in, in the way that, you know, the, in the way that microscopic organisms are not perceptible to us. That's a, a That's fascinating point, because Grush also weighed in on that. Um, this is from an, an article in New York Magazine that is a skeptic of Grush and has tabulated what it considers to be more of his outlandish claims. Uh, one of them says, he says, I don't want to necessarily denote origin. I don't think we have all the data to say, oh, they're coming from a certain location. He proposed the vehicles the Pentagon is hiding could have come from a different physical dimension as described right. in quantum mechanics saying, we know there are extra dimensions due to high energy particle collisions, et cetera, and there's a theoretical framework to explain that. It, it, does that does that help <laughs> Does that help for you or does that make well, it worse? I, no, I think that's all possible, but I, that does not at all to me resemble what we're talking about when we're talking about 
flying objects people have seen and recovered pieces of ships and technology and weird glimpses of things in the desert or where, where mm -hmm. else, that, that doesn't, that is very different and thus I think largely a hoax and not true. Mm -hmm. when an actual alien presence will be like, will be as, as different to us it, 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 like, it'd be like a shadow or an ink blot. Or yeah. It'll come from some, yeah. it'll not be something we can even, it'll be so foreign, so different to uh, and anything that, that it, it's almost like beyond our imagination. Yeah, I, I really like that. I, some people have critiqued, you know, Star Trek and other sci-fi shows for this like humanoid paradox. Yeah. Why does every alien basically look a humanoid human with makeup with on? Alien, yeah. Well, right. because the uh, costume design was not very good when Star Trek. <laughs> right. We didn't first, have um, sci-fi. They didn't have um, special effects rather back then, where you could have like blobs yeah. of clouds moving through the hallways or whatever. Yeah. But the way they do try to explain it in Star Trek, one of my favorite episodes. There's an arms race. There's this message embedded that somebody finds an archeolo uh, archaeological dig somewhere, and all everyone's looking for it. The Federation is trying mm -hmm. to get at it because they think it's like a fun artifact. The Klingons are going after it because they think it's a, it's a weapon. So are the Romulans. Everyone's chasing this thing through space. And when they find it, spoiler alert for a 30-year-old episode of TV, they discover that an old, old, old alien race that died out like millennia before any of us evolved out of the primordial soup knew its race was dying out and scattered its DNA mm -hmm. across the sure, galaxy, sure, sure. causing everybody to evolve in the yeah. same way. You have to come up with some kind of explanation <laughs> Along those lines, or else it would sure. be sure. But the, but yeah. Grush, I, I will say he's not claiming like little green men or something that just looks like a, a human in makeup or a small child mm -hmm. in makeup. You know, I think that this what he's been talking about does contemplate other dimensions, non-human corporeal mm -hmm. forms, non-corporeal forms, and he's been very clear again that he has not personally laid eyes on any of this. He was told by a source of, about the reality of some of this stuff. I also want to push back, Robbie. I saw some interesting pushback against I'm some, of your, points, here. Go <laughs> some ahead. of your points Go from ahead. the last UFO segment. You mentioned that it was in incredible to you that aliens would only have landed in the United States and only in rural areas and mm -hmm. what are the odds, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's worth noting that Grush says the first UFO case he was briefed on involved a vehicle downed in Italy in 1933, decidedly not America. The Mussolini government had allegedly kept it in storage to the end of World War II. Pope Pius VII back-channeled the existence of the object to the United States, which it obtained in 1944 or 1945. So the argument is— Was that one of the we, sequels to The Da Vinci Code, or is that a real thing that happened? <laughs> they're going to eat, they're gonna eat uh, you I know. I know. Look, look, you have to—I'm just expressing my, my skepticism <laughs> of you know, all these— or maybe, maybe— there's another dimension, and <laughs> evil Robbie from dimension 19684X crossed here, killed and replaced the real Robbie, and is trying to throw you off the set. I think that's likely. I also love that you're Scully and I'm Mulder in this dynamic. <laughs> Wonderful. More rising right after this.